Today's lesson, as you can see, uh, section 1.6 is on uh, probability. We're going to be looking at some uh, simple probability uh, problems. And my goal for today's lesson is that you will have a better understanding uh, when we're finished of how to find what are known as experimental probabilities. And then uh, secondly, uh, what does it mean to find theoretical probabilities? So I hope that you'll be able to uh, distinguish uh, between these two. Uh, we talked in class about um, applying the rules of probability in uh, certain um, areas uh, pertaining to, for example, scripture. And um, there are people out there, uh, they're known as skeptics, and they have questions. And some people uh, are what we would call honest, honest skeptics. Uh, they have uh, legitimate questions. They truly are seeking uh, for the truth. And uh, then we have, on the other hand, uh, dishonest skeptics who really aren't interested in finding the truth. They're, they're more interested in trying to uh, find ways to disprove uh, what we believe to be true from uh, what Scripture tells us. And so uh, we just had a little discussion. Uh, you can see this uh, cartoon that's kind of humorous there. Um, and then this YouTube video that you might want to watch on your own. Uh, the, the mathematics behind it is taken from a uh, mathematician named Dr. Peter Stoner. And basically, just to summarize that video, uh, it's kind of a lighthearted uh, video that uh, uses some of his research. But it's it basically says... Um, it's a way to use probability to answer a skeptic's question as to is is Jesus really the Messiah? Is Jesus really uh, who he said he is uh, in Scripture? And what Dr. Stoner did is uh, he took, um, uh, along with about 600 students, um, he, bottom line, he showed that the probability that uh, only eight of the prophecies pertaining to Jesus would have been fulfilled by chance, just happened to be fulfilled, is uh, something like 10 to the 17th power. And that's only eight of the prophecies. So uh, you can imagine, he goes on to, in the video, they use an interesting illustration of how big that number is. Uh, but Jesus didn't just fulfill eight of the prophecies that were given about him in the Old Testament. Hundreds and hundreds of years, obviously, before he was born, things were prophesied of him. But he actually fulfilled over 300 prophecies. And so um, that number, of course, is more than we can imagine, that someone could uh, fulfill all of those prophecies that were given hundreds of years before, and they and those prophecies just happen to be fulfilled. Um, and again, we we take the Bible at its word by faith. Um, we don't need those numbers to uh, substantiate our faith in who Jesus is. Uh, we believe uh, that He is who He says He is because we believe that Scripture is truth. And uh, it is actually the very words of God. And so uh, we just take God at his word and uh, by faith. But again, sometimes uh, you're dealing with people that um, uh, you can kind of uh, reason with them, try to give them the truth. And, uh, and this is one way of trying to answer what a skeptic um, might ask about Jesus and the prophecies of Jesus. So kind of interesting. Uh, you can uh, take a look at that if, you, if you'd like. Uh, let's just jump in. And um, what I did with the class today, and I'll try to run through this with you. Hopefully you have this uh, note sheet, this uh, template. And uh, what I did today is uh, we just did an example of experimental probability. So I had the ability of uh, rolling this number cube. And what I had the students do is just put a tally mark um, in the block every time the uh, a particular number showed up. And it's going to take a little bit longer for me using this board, but I just want to give you the idea 
of um, what's happening here. So every time a number pops up, we just put a little mark in the box, and at the end we counted up all of the tally marks. And to answer this first question, the experimental probability of rolling a 4, uh, for example, um, one of the classes, we actually rolled the cube 23 times. Okay, I'll, I'll just give you a for instance. We won't take the time to roll it 23 times. Um, the probability of rolling a 4, let's just pretend for a second that out of those 23, uh, three of those rolls uh, was a 4. Well, the experimental probability, of course, of rolling a 4 is 3 out of a total of 23. And then we used our calculator to uh, come up with the percent of that. 3 divided by 23, and we just rounded to the nearest whole percent. Well, contrast that with the theoretical probability of rolling a 4. Well, theoretically, there are six numbers on the cube. There's only one 4. Okay, so theoretically speaking, whenever we roll the number cube, we should have about a 16% chance, or we use the word likelihood, that our roll is going to produce the number 4. So uh, I think I'll go ahead and get that percentage from our uh, experimental probability. Let's just see what 3 divided by 23 is, and that's about 13%. Well, we had a little discussion as to why are these different. And again, the experimental probability is based on actual data, historical data. We're going to make a prediction about what is going to happen based on what has happened in our experiments versus uh, theoretical, which is strictly the total number of possible outcomes um, being divided into our desired outcome. And why are these different? These two questions kind of uh, tie into one another. Um, what can we do <clears throat> to cause the experimental probability to get a little closer to the theoretical probability? I mean, uh, theoretically speaking. Um, well, I guess the issue here is we really don't have a lot of experiments. And we would imagine, we, we could conclude that as we increase the number of roles, we should theoretically draw closer and closer to this 16% number. Uh, if we did this um, 100,000 times, we should conclude that uh, we would get a little closer and closer, maybe not right on top of 16%, but uh, we should get um, very, very close uh, in the neighborhood to 16%. So the issue here is the limited number of roles is really causing uh, this difference uh, between the two. So I hope you're getting an idea of experimental probability based on actual experiments, data, versus theoretical probability, the uh, number of actual outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Okay, uh, so let's uh, just go ahead and start filling in some blanks. The definition of probability, uh, I use the word likelihood. The likelihood <clears throat> that an event will occur. There are two types. We've already looked at them. So let's look first at experimental and experimental probability involves what we call trials, or we could use the word experiments. So the way we calculate experimental probability, the number of times an event occurs, like in our previous example, rolling a 4, that was 3, divided by the total number of trials. And again, we'll just put the word experiments. Hate to use the word that's part of that is the term we're trying to define but that's just another way of looking at the word trial so here's a couple of simple examples um, we hit the bullseye this particular player hit the bullseye eight times out of 50 what is the experimental probability that he will hit the bullseye on his next toss 
Well, the number of times the event occurs, well, the event is hitting the bullseye. He hit the bullseye eight times, and he tossed it, or he had 50 trials. So to get our answer, we're just going to do simply 8 divided by 50. And then we always want to reduce these fractions. I'm going to allow you to leave your answers in reduced fraction form <clears throat> because on your test and on quizzes at this point, we're not using a calculator. So I'm not going to ask you to find the percent form of these. So I just want you to reduce. So obviously these are both even numbers, so we can divide by 2 in each case. And the reduced form of that would be 4 out of 25. Okay, another quick example. Uh, we have this baseball player. He attempted to steal base 70 times. He was successful 46 times. So uh, the number of times an event occurs, this time the event that's occurring is stealing a base. And that occurred 46 times out of a total number of 70 attempts, 70 trials. And then once again, uh, I'm just going to have you write this as a reduced fraction. Uh, dividing by 2, you would get 23 divided by 35. All right. Uh, that, I didn't have them put this in their notes. I was just trying to give some real-life uh, data. Being a Cubs fan, I'm following uh, this guy and uh, how he's doing. And as of last night, uh, Chris Bryant had 139 hits out of a total of 463 times at bat. So using our principles of experimental probability to try to figure out what is the likelihood that he'll get a hit on his next time at bat, maybe sometime today. Well, he had uh, total trials, uh, 463, that's how many times at bat, and the event, getting a hit, occurred 139 times. And if you do this in your calculator, this is one of those times where I did have them uh, get their calculator. And um, for the first three decimal places, it was 0 .300 and then some other numbers. But in percent form, we just said that he has a 30% likelihood of getting a hit the next time he bats based on his history so far this year. Now, this is uh, the... This is based on his current um, season stats. Okay, just another example of experimental probability. Okay, well, now let's switch gears and we'll talk about theoretical probability. And we've talked about this before, but uh, you can go ahead and fill in your blank. I've given you the complete definition here for theoretical. It's the likelihood of an event happening based on all possible outcomes. We're not basing this on history. We're just basing it on all the possible outcomes. So here's an example, real easy one. What is the theoretical probability of getting an even number when you roll a number cube? This number cube has six sides, and those sides are numbered one through six. Uh, there's no trick here. All the sides are the same size. They're, they're, this is not a weighted number cube. You never have to worry about me asking you some sort of trick question there. So uh, to get this, we, we reason that there are three even numbers on the cube, and there's a total of six numbers on the cube. So theoretically, we would expect that we would have a 1 out of 2 likelihood, or a 50% likelihood, that we're going to roll an even number. Okay, example number two, uh, you need to pay close attention because some people miss problems involving prime numbers because uh, maybe they don't really understand what a prime number is. They have a pretty good idea, but maybe not a complete idea. So here we are, our scenario is uh, we have the numbers 1 through 20 on pieces of paper just written out. The papers are all the same size. There are, there's nothing different about any of the 20 pieces of paper. They're placed in a box. Uh, without looking, we reach in a box and we pick out a piece of paper with a number on it. What is the likelihood that we will pick a prime number? So what is a prime number? A prime number has two unique factors. Okay, so let's break this apart. Unique obviously means different. Factors is another way of saying 
two numbers that multiply together. All right, for example, uh, one pair of factors of six would be two and three. Okay, two and three are both multiplied together equal to six. Okay, so uh, a prime number has two unique factors. All right, so we've identified that. And those two unique factors will always be the number one and the number itself. Okay, so uh, for example, the number seven. Seven has two unique or different factors, itself and one. That's why seven is a prime number. There are no other factors of seven besides these two, the number itself and the number one. So this is why the number one is not prime. The only factors of one are one. Well, one obviously cannot be unique. It's, it's the same number used twice. So we fail this part of the definition where it says they have to be two unique factors. And one does not have two unique factors. So the first prime number will start at two. And then the next one will be three. And then the next one will be five. And then the next one seven. And so hopefully you get the picture. Uh, we can just go ahead and make a list here. Two, three, five, seven. The next one would be 11, 13. After 13 would be 17. And then 19. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like we have eight prime numbers in the box. All right. And we have a total of 20 numbers. Okay, so the likelihood or the probability that we're going to pick a prime number is 8 out of 20, which reduces, so we want to make sure we reduce it. Uh, we can divide 4 into both of these and we get 2 out of 5. So that would be my answer here. Okay, so now let's go to our marbles in a bag example. Uh, these are all different colored marbles. There's a total of 21. We're just going to reach in without looking into a bag, and we're going to pick a marble at random, and we want to know what each probability is. So this is going to be pretty easy. Uh, the denominator, of course, is going to be 21. That's the total number of possible outcomes. Uh, the likelihood that we're going to get red is the number of reds, 9, divided by the total possible, <clears throat> which is 21, and then of course we want, want to reduce. And so uh, 3 goes into both of these, and we would reduce that number to 3 out of 7. The probability of green, there are 5 greens, total of 21 marbles, and that doesn't reduce, so we'll leave our answer as 5 out of 21. All right. And then uh, finally, the probability that we're not going to get a blue. Well, you could subtract the number of blues from 21. That would be 18 out of 21. And then reduce. Um, we get uh, 3 goes into both of these. And 3 goes into 18, 6. And 3 goes into 21, 7. So pretty simple. Just uh, basic probability rules. And uh, hopefully now you understand a little bit about the difference between theoretical probability and experimental probability based on data. Okay, and so uh, I hope that helps with this assignment. Check out RenWeb uh, for the homework, and let me know if you have any questions.